Hey everyone, how is it going? We've got a bit of a different video here today. Um, I thought I would do sort of like a master class as such uh, for Windows NT 4.0 server. Um, so there's a few interesting things actually I've learned about the system and some features that uh, have been dropped around the whole ecosystem as such around the Windows 9X era and things like that. Um, so I figured why not start at the first base and um, what we can do is go through setting up a Windows uh, 4 NT4 server uh, with the domain environment, get some workstations uh, connected to it, uh, get some foundations kind of put in and um, the next sort of like video series I've got some really interesting um, and really useless uh, information um, to cover off so um, yeah let's get started all right so yes getting started so um, basically how we're going to do this is we're going to set up a Windows NT4 uh, primary domain controller this can be on a virtual VM which I actually find a little bit easier to work with um, or you can do it on real hardware, it just depends on what you've got kicking around. Um, but VirtualBox from Oracle is free and um, yeah, you can use that to just spin up the VM. Uh, so what I've done is I've put together a sort of like a rough checklist, little notes and things like that into a spreadsheet. I've put a link to this in the video description, everyone points down below. Um, but yeah, it's just in Google Docs and you can download this and copy it to your Google Drive and edit it there or save it to your PC, open it up uh, in Excel, which is what I've done here. So yeah, we'll have a look here and see what we've got. Um, it's just some quick notes, things like that, that we'll be going through today, some of the tasks, set up install procedures, uh, and then we're moving into things like users, shares, data stores, um, if you want to create a post office mailbox which is kind of like an early Microsoft Outlook Express like Outlook exchange environment but yeah uh, that's what we have got to go off so I'm not an expert just to forewarn you guys um, I'm not a NT4 expert my primary role in today's world uh, I do manage Windows servers but the Active Directory and I mean the foundations are kind of the same but the technologies have changed quite a lot um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm used to having more granularity uh, within those newer products but let's get started anyway all right so as I said I'm going to be using a VM but you can use physical hardware it's really up to you uh, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do this is um, here. I'm just going to call this uh, nt-server1 to be really boring uh, The server host name which is going to be the Windows 1 is going to be the same the domain name um, You can pick anything you want. We might just use Contoso because that's what Microsoft always use IP address, I'm going to use my local IPs, um, I have pinged this address, it is available, I don't think anything's going to, oops, be using that, sorry, I'm doing some backups in the meantime, um, but yeah, I'll put this in here, and we're going to add a subnet, and the gateway address of my network, same with my DNS, my router at home is also my DNS. Um, so, and these are just quick notes, you don't have to put these in if you don't want to. Memory, I'm going to give the VM 128 megabytes, if I can type correctly. The boot drive is going to be um, less than 2 gigabytes because with NT4 it has a limitation that you can't have your uh, boot drive any larger than two gigabytes but you can have a secondary drive or partition larger than that so yeah we'll try that also i'm laughing that i put it as two terabytes but there we go put that in there and then um for the data drive i might just make it like a 32 gigabyte partition later so let's get started configuring the vm as I said, I'm going to be using VirtualBox because you can power it up, down, map, all sorts of stuff. 
All right, so let's get started on creating a VM. This is going to be my server, so I'm going to call it NT Server One, and we're going to pick a place for the VM to sit. All right, so I'm going to create a folder on one of my hard drives. I'm just going to call it uh, NT Server One. There it is. There, so we're going to select that folder. Uh, ISO image. Um, you can download the ISO from Win World, Win PC World. Um, I'll put a link to that as well if you need it in the description. And for OS, I'm going to select uh, Windows NT4. It's quite important you do that for your guest uh, tools. Um, 128 megabytes of RAM, one CPU. We've got a two gigabyte partition in this location. You can pre-allocate the full size if you want. I'm not going to bother because the OS install is tiny and we're not setting up like a SQL database or anything so we're gonna click finish all right so now I'm just gonna do my networking and display settings so we're just gonna go through the settings here and just make sure everything is all good as I said I am gonna add a second hard drive later um, I'm gonna use a bridged adapter to my local uh, Ethernet card that's inside my desktop so the uh, networking all works basically so we're going to hit OK on that, and then we're going to start the VM up, and we'll uh, install Windows NT like uh, you normally would with any other system. All right, we're going to go through here. Uh, we're going to carry on like we normally would, accepting the terms and conditions. Uh, partition, so as I said, limited to uh, two gigabytes, and I am going to set it as an NTFS partition uh, for security um, you don't I don't know if you have to I think it affects shared drives and things like that um, or shared folders and permissions and stuff uh, so it's always good to try and do that uh, where you can so it's gonna go through check the hard drive out and then um, I believe it's gonna do a reboot and uh, we'll carry on uh, with the install all right so we are back at the installer so i'm going to go back in here and remount my server image and it's going to start setting up uh, a wizard so we're going to call this um, i'm just going to call it me uh, it's at home so we'll do that uh, cd key i do actually have one of those but you can get that from winworld pc again i'm wondering if you can almost just do this Look at that, the old ones uh, licensing. So um, this is if you've got user, um, what is it, computer access license or CALS or whatever you call them, um, or client access license. Um, I'm just going to lie, we'll just put 10 in. Um, it's fine. The computer name, this is the NetBIOS name of your server. So I'm going to call this NT Server 1, just like in my Excel file. And it's going to be a primary domain controller because it's our only one. Um, you can do standalone server, I think, um, but I always just use primary domain controller. Need to set a password that's very secure for our um, administrator account and for the domain. And you can create an emergency floppy disk drive um, image. We're not going to bother with that. And I'm just going to go through and just install all this stuff. And we'll carry on with the setup. And there's going to be some more stuff that we have to do here, especially around networking. So to go on with that, we're going to carry on with the wired network setup. You can use IIS. You don't have to have that. It's like a web hosting service. I'm just going to leave it as default. And because I'm using a VM, I can click the search button. Go next, and it'll find my um, um, network adapter. Uh, also, you want to use NetBUI. Um, I'm going to leave that on for a later project, so stay tuned for that. And there's no other protocols that we need. Um, we also need a few other little bits and pieces here. Uh, okay, so jumping ahead of myself a wee bit here, but basically, uh, there's some settings here for the virtual machine configuration which I've showed earlier um, and then we're moving on to the NT install part which is where we're kind of at now um, we've done the licensing um, 
we've done, we're up to the net buoy and the TCIP protocols and things like that. Um, so we need these two services. Um, so I, for later projects, again, I'm going to install the Microsoft uh, Network uh, Monitor if it's in here. And can we, oh no, we have to do one at a time. And I also want the uh, Microsoft uh, Monitor Tools and Agent. And we're going to hit next on that. And um, this is a part of the VirtualBox Ethernet adapter uh, package. So I'm just going to hit continue and let, um, well you can use DHCP. Um, I might choose no on that. Um, cool, so we'll let that go off and just do its thing. And this is where we're going to put in my IP address. If I had numlock on, and we'll do my subnet, my gateway. There we go. And for DNS, um, I'm actually going to just add my router in, like so. Um, I'm going to use um, Wins Resolution DNS um, and I'm just going to put the router in there. I don't know if this is required because this protocol I'm not actually very familiar with. Uh, so I think it's what we used to use before really DNS um, names took over. You had DNS resolution of computers, but that's fine. All right, so we've got all our, our bindings for our network adapter set up. So we're going to hit continue on that and we're going to carry on with the uh, Windows setup. All right, so we're at the option of setting up a domain. So I'm going to call this Contoso. Like so. So there's our server name up the top here. Our domain name that we're going to be setting up as the primary domain on this uh, server and we're going to finish the setup. All right, so on the information server, I'm just going to hit OK on these defaults and we'll carry on and it's going to ask us to create a bunch of directories because we had left that first option enabled for IIS. Uh, that's fine. So, yep, we're just going to just let that just kind of go away there um, until we get to our time zone and I'm in New Zealand, of course, so there we go there. And uh, we're going to leave this as default just for now because we haven't installed the guest add-on tools yet, which is coming up very shortly. And that's where I'll do all the drivers for the uh, system, basically. Okay, so here we go. We are at the um, computer, uh, the server. So we're going to log into the domain and um, there's going to be a few things that we need to do uh, to start with. And uh, there's it's a little bit funny actually, the first thing that I tend to do on Windows NT Server, uh, or Windows NT 4 for that matter, is I change the OS load timer. So that's when you reboot and you get the list of operating systems. It's really annoying, it takes 30 seconds to do the countdown, I just really find that frustrating. Uh, so yeah. Alright, so we're at the desktop, it's very Windows 95-esque of course. Uh, so we're going to go straight into the properties. Just right click on my computer, go to properties, and then um, I always forget where it is, but it's in the startup shutdown, and I am going to just put just a little bit of time, maybe like three seconds. Trust me, this is the very first thing you want to do because the amount of restarts we're going to be doing, um, it's going to get really old fast. So the next thing that we have to do is, um, I'll put a link to it in the description, but you will want to use my NT4 bundle uh, that I did when I did my retrospective 25 years ago, uh, sorry, Windows NT4 is 25 years old sort of retrospective. Um, it has a bunch of service packs and things like that in there. Uh, I am going to just go ahead and just do this and just a few little creature comforts. Um, just because um, the vanilla experience, it just opens a bunch of windows, it's really annoying. So I'm going to leave full titles in the um, full path in the title bar and show the file extensions. I like having that. And uh, here's all the service packs. So let's get 
Service Pack 6 installed, which is actually required first before I can install the guest add-ons. And I'm not going to do a backup because this is just a very vanilla install and if it breaks something it's probably faster just to um, remove or reinstall Windows <laughs> and then trying to like go through a recovery option for NT. Alright there's my uh, setting there already taking place as I said three seconds really just handy if you step away for a bit and you need to do something and you come back and it's still counting down I just yeah find that really frustrating. So we'll wind this baby up Good old NT uh, loading screen there and we will log in to the domain right so we are back in the machine um, so now we need to install the guest add-on so I'm gonna go to my devices install the guest add-ons I've just noticed as well that for some reason my Contoso domain um, name didn't take um, either I didn't type it in who knows I was just kind of muscle memory um, so my domain name is actually domain so very original I mean it doesn't matter it's to be honest we're not we're not in a production environment as such so uh, yeah but if you did make the same mistake I did this is probably the point where you would just probably just format and reinstall it because we've only done you know like five minutes worth of work with that so yeah so we're going to let it just kind of reboot and um, make sure that the guest add-ons will work and then uh, next up we will do the uh, extra hard drive. A bit more colour in the system now so there's my domain of domain. I'm going to untick show this screen. Our next reboot, we don't need that. I'm going to just set true colour. Um, let's just crank up the resolution. Why not? And look at that there we go and also i know it's a bit jittery but you can drag and expand the window now so yeah we can uh, see some stuff let's turn it off again and um, add another uh, additional drive to the machine right click on my vm i'm gonna go back to settings i'm gonna go to storage ah, sorry adds hard disk on the right and we're gonna um, create a new virtual box hard drive and I'm not gonna leave the allocation on as I said just it saves a little bit of time but uh, it's fine uh, so yeah let's just kind of make this uh, roughly 32 gigabytes thereabouts yeah that'll do and it's gonna sit in this folder along with my uh, virtual machine so we'll do that and we'll choose down here at the bottom right which you can't see because it's behind my face and then uh, now that I've got my two drives we can power out the VM again and um, yeah we can format the drive and mount it and um, good to go and the reason I'm doing this now instead of um, at the start is I'm not sure if the Windows NT 4 has the same issue as some other Windows operating systems like I think particularly Windows 7 or 8 um, and 10 where they can sometimes put the bootloader on the other hard drive. Um, I don't know, I don't believe it's a bug but just to be sure I've just added it later. It's just easier that way. You can just add it at the start when you're making the VM or, or what have you no biggie get that um, new hard drive added go to the start menu there should be a disk management utility um, I'm not sure if you can do mmc.exe uh, but we'll just go to the disk administrator so it's going to warn that we've done our first run um, we're going to hit yes to um, sort of adopt or initialize the hard drive that's sitting there I am going to reassign my CD-ROM to drive E, um, we'll just do that, it frees up that drive letter for my data drive, um, so we're going to just sort of bundle, wandle through here, uh, we're going to just assign it to drive letter D, um, we're not going to mark it as active because it's not a boot drive. Um, and I believe there should be a button here to sort of commit all the changes. 
Uh, yep, we want to do that. And then we're going to format. It's going to be an NTFS drive. I'm going to do a quick format on it. Uh, call it data. There we go. It's formatted. And then um, here we go. All set up, ready to roll. Okay, so we have done service pack. Uh, we've changed the timer. We've formatted any drives. I've done a little bit of personalization. Um, now we need to start the um, network monitor service and set it to auto start um, and things like that. So we're just going to go through. We've already done our TCIP settings and the install process. So let's go to our services. Once again, click on the start, admin tools, and then there should be like a server manager here. And then we can go to computer up the top and services. And then this is where we just look for our um, uh, services that we need to start. All right, so here it is here. So I'm just going to click start on that, let it kind of get going. And then we just want to make sure that it's set to start upon a login. This is required for some other bits and pieces that, I'm, as I said, I'm going to be doing later, uh, which will kind of reveal at the end of the video. But yeah, I'm just going to click start up, set it to automatic, and uh, let that run. I'm going to start the schedule service as well. And we're going to set it once again to automatic. Cool. So that's like sort of the basic post install tasks so you can do anything else you want from here inwards but yeah let's get started on the next thing which is creating uh directories for all our uh, data to sit in right so you see here on the left we're going to create four folders here starting with a shared um data partition uh or folder for users to store shared data I'm also going to create a uh, post office uh, folder for email to go in and I'm going to create a folder for uh, user uh, profiles so we're going to call this profiles and we're going to create a redirected uh, folder for user redirected folders like so so we've got four folders um, and then what we'll do is we will update these fields here uh, once I've got users kind of made. I'm going to move on to creating temporarily um, some user groups. Um, so we're going to distribute these permissions to these directories via user groups. Um, so to do that, I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to right click on the start button explore so under profiles all users administrator tools are common and what i'm going to do is just copy some of these um, over just to make it a little bit easier uh, server manager uh, i'm going to be using that later and uh, we'll do these here as well these will be useful tools all right so let's go into our user manager and this is like the Active Directory as you search for uh, <laughs> NT4. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a group. So I'm going to create a new global group. Global means that um, the domain computers can access it. And we're going to call this um, domain uh, power user. Users have more power. Hit OK on that. And by default, the administrator is going to be added to all of these. So just be wary that you will have to uh, take that out. And we're going to call this domain standard users. There we go. Cool. So we've got a couple of groups here to sort of distribute. Um, some of their um, permissions, so I'm going to just call this um, users have less power. 
there we go. And we're going to create a couple of users here. So I'm going to start with creating myself a um, domain admin account. So I'm going to call this Mitchell L underscore admin. And that's going to be Mitchell Lindsay is my name. And I'm going to call this email admin account. Set a password on this. Probably typed it in wrong. Um, I'm going to untick change password at login just because I want to set my own password. And you can set the password to never expire, which is quite good. We're going to set groups. So we've got domain users, but we also want to add me to be a domain admin. Um, I don't need to be a part of the power user because I'm not an end user as such. Um, and that's pretty much the only groups that I need to worry about for now. A few buttons down here as well, which we'll be using later when we're creating groups and users and things like that. Um, but we're going to just ignore these for now. Um, you've got hours like log on time. You're allowed to log on to the server with. Um, you can specify workstations, NT workstations, I believe, that you're allowed to authenticate against. Um, you can set auto expiry for your uh, account. Um, and yeah, you can create a local account which is off the domain. Um, and you can have dial in permissions. So, if you're using a remote dial up network connection, you can dial into the server, which I have seen demonstrated, which is quite neat. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, let's just hit add. Right, so, we've got uh, to recap, we've got a couple of groups and things like that, um, which is the primary objective. So, let's start creating some file shares. So we're going to share this and the share name I'm going to make it shared dollar and what that means is it's going to be a hidden share. I'm going to create a comment that's a shared data store. Permissions, um, we're just going to give everyone read access but um, actually sorry no I'm going to remove everyone's read access. Domain admins, they are going to have full control. There we are, and then we're going to have domain users. Um, actually, no, we're going to just avoid using the built-in groups, and I'm going to give uh, my power users and my standard users change access, like so. I have to redo that because I forgot to hit add. Um, but yeah, we're going to go to our um, domain standard users and power users they can have change control like so so there's our layout hit OK and apply so there's our users and um, security permissions I'm just going to remove everyone and I'm going to replace all this um, inherited permissions as well um, you generally wouldn't do this because you want to separate your directories out um, but once again we're going to add domain admins as full control like so and we're going to add our domain power users and standard users can have change access like so so these are all our permissions auditing um, I like turning on um, just to you know see what everyone's up to on the data share and we can just turn all of these on as well it helps putting it helps with putting things in the event log as well if you're having issues so that error there was because I haven't turned on uh, auditing so to do that for the um, especially for the event viewer if you go policies and audit we want to order all the events so it puts it in the event log just handy for um, diagnostics and things like that I know I missed one here but we'll go back up and grab that sucker there we go cool let's carry on so we're going to do the post office as well that can be hidden Actually, before I get too far, just remember, you probably want to update your cheat sheet, which is what it's here for. And we're going to go. Well, 
like so. Try and keep your file names and shares and things short because Windows 98 and 9X and all of that, they don't um, play nicely with long file names. Um, so I'm going to make domain users, I'm going to just kind of cheat and we're going to add this as just full control. So domain users can access all of this. Um, but yeah, we're going to just set that up just to make it easier. Um, and we're going to remove the all. Turn on auditing. Right, and we'll change our um, security settings. Um, for the redirected profile location. I'm probably doing this all wrong, but um, we are just going to make our domain users um, can change. And domain admins have full control. Apply that. Go to our security permissions for the, sh uh, the share itself. Um, you can... I would leave this off for this particular share and the redirect because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to adopt the permissions so other users will be able to see other users uh, profiles and things like that so um, yeah bit of a gotcha there and we're going to add domain users can change same with the redirect going to make it hidden remove all the permissions as usual domain admins have full control and domain users have uh, change rights um, once again I'm going to leave that inherit the subdirectory permissions um, alone just because it affects the um, the flow Domain admins have full control, domain users have change rights. Turn on auditing. Alright, to recap, we have created some users. We have got some directories and things like that. Um, well, we've got an admin user, we've got our groups, we've got um, some paths which I need to update. Very important just because it helps when you go back. Um, yeah. Just helps to sort of keep that uh, information at hand and then you can like print it off and keep it handy. There we go. So we've got our four shares. Um, yeah. Let's um, set up some other things. So what I'm going to do now is let's jump into the uh, mail settings. Um, Microsoft Mail Post Office is what we want to set up. Um, so we want to create a new post office and we're going to set our location to be our post office location. There it is there. So we're going to let it go through. I'm going to create an admin mailbox. There's our password. Yeah, just ah, mailbox name is going to be the administrator. Ah, I only support so many file names, so we're going to give it a nickname. Cool. So it's just warning here that we need to set up our shared directory permissions, which we've already done. So we've done that, and in theory, what we should be able to do is just go add, um, untick internet mail and use the Microsoft mail. There's our local directory on the server. And then use your password, set up your um, address books and things like that. And then in theory, if you click on inbox, it should have some uh, messaging stuff. Look at that. So now our users can email each other, which we'll demonstrate uh, later. I just want a few more users under my belt um, in Active Directory. That's what I'm just going to call it, or the user manager. 
Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is this other tab that I've got set up. This is where we kind of delve into um, some more granular stuff. So here's the folders that we've set up before. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just copy these. Gonna get our redirect. There we go. And yeah, these are some um, group names that you can kind of map out. But yeah, I've got my little cheat sheet um, with all the locations and things like that, which is quite important uh, coming up. Right, so for users, um, there's a particular path that you might want to actually use um, when setting up users. If I can get this to work, here we go. Right, so, gonna go new user, and we're gonna create a name, so this is gonna be James B, I'm properly, um, and he's gonna be the um, GM or something. Give him a password. You can tell him he needs to change it on login. Groups, so he's a part of domain users, but he's also gonna be a part of uh, the power user group uh, Profile settings, we're going to set our um, path And then we're going to use the um, Percent sign, we're going to create user name Dot USR and the .usr is specific to this user. You can create a mandatory user profile which you can specify, um, but we're gonna just do it like that. If you look at the uh, description under helpful links here, um, there are some info um, links that are really good just to have a quick read through, um, just to get an idea of what I'm talking about with some of this stuff. Then we're going to create a home directory. Going to map it to drive letter H, and that's going to be NT server one, the redirected folder path. And then once again, it's going to be percent user name percent. Did I put anything else in there? Like that. Uh, we don't have a login script yet, but we'll make one. And then we're going to add. And then in theory, under our profiles, he hasn't made one yet because he hasn't logged in, but redirect, there should be a user uh, directory, which we can't get into because we don't have the permission set. That's fine. Cool, we're going to create another user. And uh, this one's going to be um, John Doe. Going to create um, this user to be a part of the standard users group. I'm sure we'll apply some group policies to later. Uh, once again, copy this. I think there might be a way to template this. Once again, I can't see what I'm doing. And we're going to make a home path. so add that right so we've got a couple users um cool let's um start setting up some um group policies for these users now uh, just before i get too far just remember that the um groups um that you set up you might want to remove the administrator account from them like so uh, just because you log in as the local server administrator into something and you've got a group policy assigned to that group and the administrator will suddenly get all these random uh, settings and things like that. I am also going to go back into the control panel 
Um, we're going to administer a uh, the existing post office mailbox. And we're going to um, use the admin mailbox, but we're also going to add a new user. So this one is going to be James Brown. I'm going to use the user's UPN. I'm going to add a password. Uh, what was his department? GM. Not that it matters. Same with um, John Doe. Got a great imagination. There we go, got some email accounts. I'm actually also going to make one for my email admin account. And I don't know if I can put a special character in there. It might not. No, it doesn't allow me. So, yeah, once again, um, one of those like little gutches with these older systems. Not that I think you can use special characters in most of the other stuff, but yeah. There we go. Might be worth just putting that as a note somewhere, either under here, back on this other tab, under the post office stuff. But yeah, up to you. Right, so group policy time. This is where you can get really messed up. Go off to a good start. Try that again. So our NT4 comes with a policy editor. Uh, this is available on Windows 9X as well from the Windows CD-ROM, which I'll show later. We're going to hit New. Um, so we can set up some default settings um, for all computers and workstations, NT specific. NT policies and Windows 9X policies are completely different. You have to use a completely different policy set. Uh, so we're going to focus just on NT for now, and then we'll move into the 9X stuff shortly. So with that out of the way, uh, you can read more about that by the way in the um, description. Uh, in the link, sorry, in the thing. So yeah, you can set this up as well. I'm not going to bother because I believe NT is smart enough to work with that. Um, but I can set like a logon message, which is quite nice. So if you're not an authorized user, don't attempt to log in. But um, we've got, you can create a user policy, a, a policy to a group, which is kind of like a user policy or a computer policy. So basically these two guys here, but I'm going to add a group. I'm going to click browse and we're going to create groups um, settings for the standard users. So these are our pleb users and we're going to do a few things here. We want to change the color scheme. So all these users get the rose theme, they get a wallpaper. Whoops, I accidentally cleared that out. Uh, they're going to get a wallpaper. Now, this is where you will have to make something or have a bitmap image. We're going to make one. Add some sprinkles in. Right, this is our um, domain user. I'm going to put it in a place, of course, that everyone can get to it. You can put this in your net logon folder, I guess, if you really wanted. Um, but I'm going to just put domain user bitmap. The only downside of putting this in here is um, someone could delete it. But there you go. Cool. And uh, what we can do is I want to create a uh, folder for users um, on the NT domain that they get a specific um, apps folder. So we're going to do that and we're going to copy some stuff into it, mainly some games, especially pinball. And there's going to be a few useful uh, utilities in this folder. Go to NT Shell. And you can go and customize any of this. Um, but what I'm going to do is add a custom programs folder. Can't control A that. sure that I always like to uh, run 
any directory I put in just to make sure it opens that the path is correct. Uh, just keep in mind as well, you, permissions very important. Uh, making sure that you know the correct permissions are set. Um, yeah, they can all get to that, so that's fine. Just gotta say it. You know, you gotta make sure but that is all good. Basically, just gonna go in here and. Um, Let's add another uh, group for our power users and change their theme. Um, it's like the simplest way of kind of showing the group policies in play, just visually. Make it the reds. Right, so when doing group, um, any group policies and things like that, they need to be named and saved into a particular location so that the computer can basically pick up that policy. Um, so I've Put a little note in here where it needs to go and what it needs to be called. So it needs to be called ntconfig.pol. So we're going to call that ntconfig.pol. I'm going to save a copy on the desktop. And the reason I'm doing that um, is just because it means if the policy was corrupt or deleted, it makes it kind of easier to find. So we're going to go back to our C drive, Windows NT, System32 and then repl, replication, import folder and scripts is where we want to put that. And then yeah, there's our group policy um, file. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to spin up another virtual machine um, with Windows NT4 workstation on it. It's the same setup as basically NT server and we can try out logging in as a couple of these users. Alright, so back now with a Windows NT4 workstation all set up in vanilla. So we are going to join this to the domain, so let's do that now. Uh, I believe that I have an IP. Let's see if I can ping the uh, domain control, which I can, so that's always a good start, it's worth doing. Uh, so, network. I'm going to change this, we're going to join it uh, to the domain, mm, domain conveniently. Um, actually I can use my uh, email admin, which we should technically probably use the administrator account. And just like that we are joined on the domain. So we'll give it a reboot and while it's doing that. Uh, let's check out our, uh, where is it, uh, server manager should have a PC one in there we do look at that so we have joined the workstation to the domain using the uh, correct credentials uh, so yeah let's minimize this and um, check out the uh, NT ser uh, workstation let's log in as our first user I'm going to try and log in to the domain ah, if it eventually spins up. Uh, let's log in as my admin account. There we go, we are authenticated. Um, just one more thing that I'm going to do is manually map some shared drives. Um, for that I've got a log on batch script which I've made here and it's going to map uh, the shared drive um, directory and the user's home directory I guess to drive X and drive H respectively. And uh, yeah, let's copy that into our um, scripts uh, replication import folder. You can find out what um, your server is using for a um, for its net logon directory by going into the server manager shared directories under computer, and then yeah, there's your net logon directory there, which you can see. And yeah, that name, logon.bat, that needs to go into your users. So I want me to have that script. Oops. Under logon script name, there it is there. As I said, I'm sure you could probably automate this somehow. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to do that. I'm used to being able to just right click and go copy for a user. Um, cool, so we got our users there, so I'll keep a note of that, and let's log in as, um, oh, you already saw the prompt for the warning, uh, let's try and log on as James Brown, account's been disabled, sweet, 
did I do that? I did do that. Password never disabled. Uh, never expires, sorry. Let's try that again. <laughs> Ta-da! Still got a few issues here. I can see... Um, I don't know if I set a wallpaper for that account. I don't think I did because they're a part of the power user. Uh, but that's fine. Um, we've got those two map drives up there, which is really good. Uh, let's check out um, John Doe. If any luck, we should have a wallpaper. Just a little gotcha. You'll notice, like, I got this error when I'm logging in where it can't um, slow to um, network detection. This is a red herring. Um, Windows NT does all sorts of stuff like this when something's not right. You get these random messages. Uh, what it's actually probably complaining about is that I mistyped the uh, user's profile path um, when creating it because of course I'm just blasting through these settings without really looking too closely but there we go. Fixed. And then we should have our two drives. We've got the shared data drive and we've got our redirected. Can't get into James's stuff, but I can get into mine. Awesome. Now, yeah, once again, um, when you're trying to diagnose issues, um, like for instance, a wallpaper not showing, it's probably because you've made a typo. It's about going back and retracing your steps. Um, yeah, just really just to make sure that. Um, you didn't miss anything so we'll give that another try here um, copy that guy over to my C drive might be worth also just creating a shortcut uh, we'll, we'll make a shortcut actually we'll copy and paste that there so it's a bit easier to get in there and then from there you can replace the uh, group policy so, uh, another gotcha as well, so this is again coming back to permissions are so important um, when you're creating group policies and things as uh, an administrator, keep in mind those permissions are going to be inherited. So, uh, if you're finding like I am where your group policies are not applying, like none of our wallpapers, anything like that, um, go to your system32 um, replication import scripts folder, uh, go to your group policy file. Um, so um, I'm going to go through and let's check all the permissions on these. So yeah, everyone can read that. Um, let's check out permissions on this. Yeah, everyone can read that. And here's our group policy file, which we've made as an administrator, keep in mind, using the policy editor. And you can see here that there are no permissions to allow domain users uh, to read that group policy. So we need to be able to do that. And fingers crossed, um, we actually get group policies. All right, voice over time here. So what's actually going on is the group policy is adopting the domain user group first. So not only are we battling uh, permissions against the uh, group policy file, but also you need to check um, that your uh, group priorities, uh, which I'll demonstrate here, are the uh, being processed in the correct order. So the domain user policy or group, sorry, is overriding our changes that are implemented for the power users and the standard users so when I stripped everything out uh, that's why the group policy started working because the domain user group uh, was not in play here so we'll carry on all right so about an hour has passed in the time of editing um, I had a heap of problems with group policy which is not uncommon uh, my golden bit of advice is check your permissions and if in doubt blah all the way start small start from scratch um, I ended up having to do that with the group policy I actually went so far as to reinstall windows on the workstation that I had set up so now I've just got these two groups here um, and as you can see we've got a nice little wallpaper and um, yeah, here's my customs uh, applications folder. Um, so yeah, we can log out as this user and we can log in as uh, someone else. 
different color scheme here. Um, and there, there, part of the power users group, that's the wallpaper those users get. Um, there's all the apps and things like that. And um, yeah, there's all the shared drive mappings and their redirected um, folder. I do believe as well, the, uh, yeah, I did remove the run dialog box. Uh, keep in mind that if you are having um, issues where users are getting policies that you've previously tried to set, like I have in my new group policy, allowed users to have the run dialog box but it is missing from here you have to blow your user data away essentially and get it to recreate um, because what it will be doing is restoring not only the profile for the user on the server which has been sucked back in but the group policy uh, on the machine sorry um, as well will be uh, stopping that so yeah group policy always it sucks back then sometimes and it sucks now <laughs> you can't get away from it so anyway we've got our users here we can um, add their mailbox as well uh, post office dollar with can I browse to that uh, this is where ma making it not hidden might also be uh, beneficial. Got a cheeky little workaround for that. go I'm actually gonna copy this path save in my little text file if I need it on another shared drive uh, so we are James Brown I believe there we go set up your mailbox in theory uh, there we go we got a welcome message uh, we've got our folders and things like that you can create a new email here and can go to our um, mail contact list. We're going to send the admin an email and go, Yo, you suck because I missed a bunch of stuff. Send that off. I think you can deliver that now. I don't know how long the timer is for delivering mail on our server. We're still logged in as the admin, I believe. So we can open up our mailbox here. Get rid of all of this. Close this and this. And I think you can click on deliver now. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to automate it. Here's our message. So we can reply back, deliver it, go back to our workstation. You can do attachments and things like that now. Uh, we've got our reply here. Cool. So we've got our post office going, got some user pro, uh, policies going, map drives, things like that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's always so much fun with uh, these old systems. Just the way that you have to work them some ways and the limitations that you, uh, you get from them. Right, well, now that we've got that all sorted, let's jump over to our uh, Windows 98 computer and join it to the domain and set up some uh, group policies. All right, so we're back on the Windows 98 computer. First thing we're gonna do is go to the control panel, network, client for Microsoft Networks. Open that up and we'll select log on to the Windows NT domain. We'll put our domain name in there. And of course we need to do a restart to get that initially uh, bedded in. Following that restart, we're going to log in as the domain admin account. First time that a user logs in is always going to get that uh, password prompt message. And then from there, we want to turn on the access control list. Um, we're going to just use the uh, domain to authenticate users against shares and folder permissions and things like that. 
So once again, it's going to want to do a restart. We're going to hit no on that and actually go to the password option here. From there, we're going to go to user profiles and we're going to tell it that we want each user to have their own individual uh, profile and we want to store those as well. And then we can reboot finally. And um, yeah, hopefully that's bedded in. Logging in as the administrator account again. Uh, you can see here that we can um, mount the Windows 98 CD and we can set up the group policies. To do that, go to the Add and Remove Programs Windows Setup, have disk, and then um, just put the Windows 98 CD in the CD drive or just copy these folders from the CD. Uh, you go to Tools and you want to go to the um, ResKit folder. I always go to the wrong one first and then go down to what is it called uh yeah and then admin and then policy edit poll edit inf is the file you want and we'll just hit ok on that and select both of these components and that is the group policy editor installed it's best to do this on a windows 9x machine and that's because the group policies are specific to this operating system uh, so the idea being is you create your group policies on a uh, golden machine and then you uh, apply those for other 9x machines so once again i'm going to create a new file and we're going to add some uh, groups and things that we want to apply the group policies to Keep in mind as before you want to make sure that your groups and everything have been processed in the correct order and not overriding each other with settings and then um, yeah i'm going to go through and we'll create some um, custom stuff like we did before on the windows nt server like you know program uh, folder wallpaper colors uh, just things like that they're visually there you, i can show you the uh, workings of group policy itself but there's a few things that you actually need to do as well like we need to have um windows 98 join the well process on the domain and also update the group policies uh, from the domain and to do that you probably want to edit your uh, default um, PC group so I'll show that in a minute but here's me just setting up that wallpaper uh, just to allow um, yeah just to show the difference between the users and the groups and things like that that they're a part of um, it's the easiest way as I said to visually show that so yeah here we go we're gonna create a logon banner this is the default computer group as well um, or policy set and then um, I'm going to tell it to log on to the domain as the domain. It's always good just to have that in there. Uh, but more importantly is this update button um, further down. You'll see this here. And what that will do is from what I've read that allows the client to contact the domain controller and suck in the group policies. Um, I believe it needs to be in there for this to all work properly. So otherwise it won't do it automatically and that's under update windows uh, sorry remote update it's different from the windows update which you can see there more importantly save your files config.pol again in the excel file i've put that there i'm going to copy that over to my shared folder directory and then i'm from there i can just suck that into the um net logon directory which is that import um folder which i've uh, shown before and then from there we can go back and trial it out okay so we're going to log in as a user i'm going to pick john uh there we'll try him out and uh yep as i said every user the first time they're going to get this uh login box so we'll uh, put the password in Here's our fancy wallpaper and our fancy uh, color scheme, which you can see here. And we've also got our custom um, programs folder. Currently, there is nothing in it because I neglected to actually copy anything in there, but that's easy enough. We'll just go to our shared directory, um, go to our 9 9x apps folder, and um, yeah, just copy and paste whatever you want in there. Now, um, as again, it's just a little bit of fun just to showcase the group policies in play. And then um, all the users uh, working in the environment can get their lovely uh, solitaire minesweeper fix. So yeah, we'll log in as this other user. Once again, it's going to ask um, for us to put a password in. I believe you can set up fancy redirect folders and stuff like that, although I haven't dived into it that deeply. 
All right, well, that's doing um, policies at least for 9x clients. We'll jump back over to me in um, front of the webcam again. Uh, now this is all set up and working. So, yeah, cut back. All right, everyone. Um, well, that is sort of like the rough um, quick start on how to set up a Windows domain um, for NT servers, of course. So NT4, the reason why I've sort of chosen to run with this is A, it does some pretty cool tech that um, I don't believe is compatible with the newer versions of Windows Server, which um, is going to be really exciting. Um, but also it's quite simple to work with. It's actually a really simple and well it's also limited um, server operating system so yeah anyway so this is the first part of like three maybe four videos that I'm going to be doing on the NT4 server platform. The next two videos that are coming out which I'm really excited to do um, which I've already got a proof of concept already tested it I know it works um, but I haven't seen it demonstrated that well and uh, it took a lot of uh, information finding and trial and error is um, the easiest one is going to be installing Windows 9x so that's 95 98 and ME um, all from one floppy disk so well you can have a floppy disk per OS install so the idea is if you've got a suite of computers you can go up put the disk in it will boot up, load a bunch of applications and things like that, and then run through um, even an automated install um, of the operating system, which I think would be really cool uh, to show. And that's the easiest part. The um, the next uh, video, which pro probably be the third one, um, just because I know how long it's going to take to get it set up, um, is going to be um, booting windows 95 from once again a floppy disk but the whole operating system so there's no hard drive in the computer so essentially you you can do it with a boot rom but i'm using the floppy disk as like a um like a master boot record device as, as you might think of it as and um yeah running the entire operating system from your windows nt4 server um on, a, on real hardware so we'll fire it up on a computer it's full of bugs and limitations and it's horrible and no one would in their right mind would even want to use it but I haven't seen it demonstrated too much and the reading I've seen online it's um it's a lot of Novell network networking with boot ROMs and things like that but not actually on I haven't seen it demonstrated that much on normal hardware without those boot roms booting off a floppy disk and um yeah I'll show you guys how to set that up and do that if you want to play around but you need to have all this prep work majority of it granted without the users uh in place first before you can do all of that so um yeah that's why i kind of thought well, you know what why don't we do also setting up a primary domain controller setting up basic mailboxes users group policies uh, things like that that you might want to have uh, in the system but yeah anyway that wraps it up for now and um, yeah sorry it's probably quite a long video but I'll try and cut it up and make it coherent and uh, we'll see how we get on but yeah definitely if you want to see some more fancy stuff that uh, specifically um, as I said that third video that NT4 server can only do this is as far as I'm aware the only version that it supports and it only works for Windows 95 as well so those two products are the only time that you'll ever see this within Windows natively um, yeah definitely stick around and um, yeah keep po I'll keep you posted on that anyway thanks for watching and um, yeah catch you guys soon and we'll see you in the next one Bye for now.